Hey guys, it's Alexandra from creationcrochet.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make my Remy clutch. My Remy series features a fun ripple pattern. This is a large clutch. I wanted it to have a sort of leather look on the bottom, and that's why I went with this solid brown. And I also matched it on the top. This color is called Mushroom. I knew my other color was going to be white when I was working with this, but I had a tough time picking a coordinating color. After I worked a couple samples, I decided to go with this mint green color. It is called, it's got a different name, Vertigris. The yarn I'm using is worsted weight, dishy yarn, 100% cotton. I love it, it's durable, it's color fast. The cotton fiber gives such great stitch definition. A similar yarn is Hobby Lobby's Crafter Secret Cotton. Lily Sugar and Cream is also similar, it's just a little bit thicker so you may need to go down a hook size. If you wanted to use a different yarn like Red Heart Super Saver or a wool blend, then um, you may need to go up a hook size because the characteristics of cotton fabric is more relaxed. A wool blend or an acrylic blend is going to be a little bit more compact. So the finished product will come out smaller. To go with this dishy yarn, I'm using an H8 5mm crochet hook. If you're using a similar lining to what I am using, then gauge is essential as it will need to fit that bag. You will take gauge down here in the half double crochet section. You will use a soft tape measure. Measure across 14 half double crochets and it will be 3 and 3 quarter inches wide. After you finish working the 5 rounds here, then you want it to measure about 2 and 1 eighth inches tall. If you're measuring smaller, you'll want to go up a crochet hook size, and if you're measuring larger, you'll want to go down a crochet hook size. And again, the gauge only matters if you're using a similar lining to what I'm using. If you're making your own, gauge is not essential. This lining I got at Hobby Lobby. They have different sizes. It is a canvas bag with a zipper, and it's ready to go. It saves a lot of time, so I always use these liners. And this liner measures 9 and 1 quarter inches tall by 10 and 7 8 inches wide. You're going to find the link to this free crochet pattern down below in the description. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with a slip knot. So I've pulled the working yarn over my fingers here. Wrap it around my index finger two times. Hold the tension with my thumb and my middle finger. Pull the loop on the left up and over the other one, but not off my finger. Then I'll pull the loop on the left now up over the other one and off my finger. Insert my crochet hook into the loop that's on my finger and pull it off. I'll hold the working yarn with my right hand and the short tail end in my left. I'm going to tighten that up to normal tension. For my clutch, I want to start with a chain 40. To chain, we yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. We have three chains there. I'm going to continue working until I have all my chains. I have all my chains worked. Now I'm going to work two half double crochets into the second chain from the hook. We don't count the loop that's on our hook, so there's one and two. We're going to yarn over, insert our hook directly into the center of that chain, yarn over and pull through. Three loops are going to be on my hook, 
yarn over, pull through all three loops. And we'll work one more half double crochet into that same exact chain, yarn over, insert your hook into the center of the chain, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Now we're going to continue working down our chain, just one half double crochet per chain, up to the second to last chain. In the last chain, we're going to work an increase there that's equal to three half double crochets into the same stitch. So I'm just going to go ahead and work my half double crochets down here. Let's work one more together. Half double crochet into the next chain, yarn over, insert your hook into the center of the chain, yarn over, pull through, three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops, and just continue across. Here's my second to last stitch. In the last chain, we're going to work three half double crochets all into that same chain. And this is to increase this corner so that we can work down the other side. Your beginning uh, chain here will open up because that's not secured. You can hold your fabric with the right hand and pull on that tail end with the left, it'll close up. But we'll better secure that later when we weave in our ends. With this increase here, the first round is going to lay flat. We're going to rotate our work so that we can half double crochet into each chain on the opposite side. So in pattern, this looks like half double crochet in the opposite side of the foundation chain. That chain that we started with is our foundation chain and now we're just going to half double crochet into each chain on the other side. Before I work my next stitch I like to work over the beginning tail end for about three or four stitches and then I drop it. The most secured end you could have is weaving in so if I just work over a couple stitches, that takes out the first pass of weaving, because I always do three. So when I work this next half double crochet, I'm just going to hold the tail end against the body of my chain. I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the next chain with the tail end on top. Yarn over, pull through. I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over and pull through all three and I just worked over that tail. And I'm gonna do that again probably for the next two stitches and then I'm just gonna drop it and not crochet over it at all anymore. Now I'm just gonna continue working all the way down in each stitch across. There's my second to last stitch. I have evenly half double crocheted all the way across. And I'm back to the very first stitch of the round where we worked two half double crochets. We just need to work one more half double crochet into that same chain there. 
so that this completes the three half double crochet increase of the corner. So I'll insert just into that same stitch as the first one. And now I'm going to slip stitch join to the first half double crochet, insert my hook into that first half double crochet picking up both loops, yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop that's on my hook. And now our round is complete. We will slip stitch at the end of each round. For your clutch, you're going to have 80 half double crochets in this first round. For round two, we're going to start with a chain one. We're going to half double crochet into each stitch all the way around, and then we're going to slip stitch join to the first half double crochet of the round. In this round, you're going to have the same number of stitches as you finished round one with. So we'll start by yarning over and insert our hook into the very first stitch of that round. Yarn over, pull through. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all three to complete a half double crochet. And continue half double crocheting into each stitch all the way around. Now that I've made it all the way around, I'm going to insert my hook into the first half double crochet under both loops there. Then I'll yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop on my hook to complete a slip stitch join. I'm going to pull up a loop really quick so I don't lose this stitch. The way that this is going to be is we're going to fold it in half right where we worked in that foundation chain, how we worked on both sides. In between those stitches is the middle. And now our bag is going to form in rounds worked on top of this. For this clutch, we're going to continue working the same way as we just did for round two. We're going to chain one, half double crochet in each stitch all the way around and join. And we're going to do that for a total of five rounds so that this equals about two inches tall. I'm going to be working this sample following the instructions for my Remy cosmetic bag or hook pouch. So I'm going to stop here for this sample because it's as tall as I want it to be. But for the clutch, you're going to continue working until you have five rounds worked in this initial color, and then we'll start the ripple pattern. Now let's get into our ripple pattern. I'm reinserting my hook here and pulling it down to normal tension. I'm going to be showing you how I change yarn colors. I do it in a more non-traditional way, and that's simply just to try to get the least noticeable seam from where I'm changing my colors. My next color is going to be this cream color. So I'm forming a loop here and I've got a tail end long enough I can comfortably weave in. I'm going to put that loop on my hook. 
and then I'll pull it through. Then I'm going to take the initial color, in this case it's brown, and I'm going to tug on it so that that loop disappears. Then I'll drop it and the tail end, pick up my new working yarn. Sometimes the chain is twisted, so I just fix that. Start with my chain. In this case, it's going to be a chain three. And now you can see that that brown loop is gone. It might pop up because it's not secured yet as I work. I will just take it, hold the fabric, and tighten it down, and it'll disappear again. This is a seamless transition that I like to do. You can work however is most comfortable for you when you work your color changes, but I'm going to be showing you how I do that. In this next round here, we have to build the wavy pattern for the ripple to go on top of. So we're going to be working a variety of stitches. This chain does not count as a stitch here but it is the height of the treble crochet that we're about to work. So we're going to yarn over two times, insert our hook into the very first stitch of the round, yarn over, pull through, there are four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. That is a treble crochet. Then we're going to work a double crochet into each of the next two stitches, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Double crochet into the next stitch as well, yarn over, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Then we'll half double crochet into the next stitch. And then we'll work a single crochet into each of the next three stitches. Insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. So we've started with our treble crochet and worked downward. Now we need to work upward again. So the next stitch will be a half double crochet. Then we'll double crochet into each of the next two stitches, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, Three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Double crochet into the next stitch. And treble crochet into the very next stitch. So our treble crochet starts our repeat all over again. I'll show you how to work one of those one more time. Yarn over two times, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through. There are currently four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. We're going to continue working this pattern all the way around. The treble crochet is what starts the repeat, so it will be treble crochet, double crochet into each of the next two stitches, half double crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into each of the next three stitches, half double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into each of the next two stitches all the way around and when you get to the end you're going to finish on a double crochet stitch.
All right, there's my last stitch of the round. I'm gonna go to the top of my treble crochet there. So skipping all these chains, go to the top of the treble crochet, insert there, and complete a slip stitch. Then I'll pull up a loop so I don't lose that. And now you can see that ripple pattern has started forming. Now all the rest of the rows will be worked in double crochets, but they'll be built on this ripple pattern, so they'll take that shape. This is where I want to introduce my next color for the striping. So I've slip stitch joined the round. I'm going to just hold the tension here, grab my new color, which is purple. I formed a loop and I have a tail end long enough to weave in and I'll put that loop on my hook, pull it through. Then I'll take that cream color and I'm going to tighten it down so that that loop disappears. Then I'll drop my tail end. I'll grab my working yarn and my chain is twisted again so I'm just going to fix that. Chain 2 and I can tighten that cream down again if I need to but now it's a seamless transition. I'm ready to go in purple. I'm going to start by working a double crochet into each of the first four stitches. So the very first stitch goes right where I slip stitch joined. And then you'll double crochet into each of the next three stitches as well. Then I'm going to double crochet three stitches together. To do that I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops only, leaving two loops on my hook. Yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. We have three loops that we're leaving on our hook. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. We now have four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all four loops. Then we'll double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And into the next stitch, we're going to work three double crochets. This is going to begin the repeat with three double crochets, and those go right into the stitch that's above the treble crochet from the round below. So this is the repeat beginning three double crochets into that stitch. Then you'll double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Then double crochet three stitches together, double crochet into each of the next three stitches, and begin the repeat again with three stitches into the next stitch. So let's complete this repeat. Double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Then double crochet three stitches together, leave two stitches on there, now we have three and four, yarn over, pull through all four, double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And now you're ready to begin again with three double crochets into the next stitch, which is above that treble crochet. You're going to continue working all the way around. When we get back to the beginning here, we'll add an extra stitch into that first stitch to complete the three double crochets there, since that beginning chain two counts as one of them. Then we'll slip stitch join and we're ready for our next round.
All right, there's my last stitch of the round. We need to add one more so we can complete the three double crochets here in the beginning. Here I want to work this last stitch into the slip stitch here. Where we slip stitch joined our round, it forms this little stitch right here, right underneath the beginning chain two. That's where I'm going to work my last double crochet. Then I'm going to slip stitch join to the top of the beginning chain two. So there's the first chain down here, second chain, insert right in the center and complete a slip stitch join. And now our round is complete and I'm gonna switch back to that cream color. For this next round and for every round, I'm gonna be carrying my yarn up on the back side. So here I've slip stitched my round. I'm gonna hold the tension there, drop my purple, pick up that cream color tighten it up and then naturally pull it onto my hook and through that loop. Then I'm going to tighten down the purple so it disappears. Start with a chain two and I'm ready to start my round. When you look from the inside you're going to have floats and that looks like this right here where the cream color is on top of the purple fabric. You're going to have those going up the side, but they're only going to be visible from the inside of the bag. From the right side of the bag, you're not going to see it at all. So if that bothers you and you don't want to have those floats, you can fasten off at the end of each round and then reattach your yarn and just weave in all those ends. I don't like to weave in ends, so I'm going to carry my yarn. I'm going to line it with a bag so I won't even see that in the end. Each round is going to be started the same way. We change to our new color and then we work the same exact stitch pattern. We're going to start by double crocheting into each of the first four stitches and that first stitch is now going to be worked into the top of that beginning chain where you slip stitch join to and then into each of the next three stitches And then we're going to double crochet three stitches together. And you'll notice your previous decrease is coming up here two stitches away. So as you work these decreases, the center stitch is going to be worked over that previous decrease. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. That's the first one. The next time you yarn over and insert your hook, it's going to be into that previous round's decrease stitch and then you'll work the next stitch just to the left of it and yarn over and pull through all four loops and you'll see that your decrease stitches are going to line up in the rounds. Then we'll double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And now it's time to begin your repeat again. You're going to work three double crochets into that next stitch. You're going to see that that next stitch is the center stitch of the previous round's three double crochets. For each of the remaining rounds here, you're going to have your three double crochets always in that center stitch from the previous rounds, three double crochets. So here's the top of our repeat, three double crochets into that stitch, double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Then double crochet decrease across the next three stitches with the center one lining up with the previous rounds decrease. Then double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And 
and we're back to the top there where you will start your repeat again. We'll work all the way around in pattern there. Once we get to the end, we'll work one final double crochet into that same stitch as the first to complete our three double crochets there, and then we'll slip stitch join to the top of the chain. There's my last double crochet of the repeat. I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the very first stitch, which is that slip stitch that the chain two is coming out of. Then I'm gonna complete my double crochet. That gives us three double crochets here in the beginning. Go to the second chain, which is the top chain of the beginning chain, and complete a slip stitch join. And there we are. For all the remaining rounds, we're going to work them exactly the same as these last two rounds that we worked. I'm going to continue alternating my colors here, but I'm going to work off camera. I'm not sure exactly how tall I need this bag to be. I'm just going to work off camera until I have close to the top. And then I'll be back to tell you how many rows I worked and I'll show you how to finish off this bag. It's time to work the round that is going to flatten out that top, sort of like what we did here with this cream color in round three, where we built the ripple pattern. Now we'll take that ripple pattern and we'll even it out so it has a flat edge along the top. All right, for my big clutch, I've been working the sample with this smaller bag, but my big clutch is this one that is green and white. I just alternated two colors, and you'll, you can see those floats right there. From the right side, you don't see anything at all. From the inside, it's minimal. I am putting a lining in it, so even more so. Now for this, bag I have decided to carry that brown up and when I did I just have really long floats on the inside because I knew I was going to be putting a lining in this but as we're getting ready to work the round where we even out that ripple we have the five rounds of half double crochet here in the beginning one round where we built the ripple stitch and then 11 rounds of the ripple stitch. So we have 17 rounds in total right now and it's measuring about eight and three quarter inches tall from the very bottom of the bag to the very top of one of those three double crochet clusters. I'm going to switch to my pink color for this next round. Then I'll start with a chain one. 
The first stitch is going to be a single crochet worked into that beginning chain. Insert my hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops. Then I'll single crochet into the next stitch as well. Half double crochet into the next stitch. Then I'm going to double crochet into each of the next five stitches. And the center one is going to be over the decrease there from the previous round. Then we start at the top of our repeat. Half double crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into each of the next three stitches. With the center one being right over that center stitch of that three double crochets together. half double crochet into the next stitch then double crochet into each of the next five stitches with that center one being over that decrease there alright and we're just going to continue working all the way around you can already see how it's evened out there continue working half double crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into each of the next three stitches, that's over the three double crochets together, half double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into each of the next five stitches. All the way around. When you get back here to the beginning, you're going to finish off with a single crochet in that last stitch, and then we'll slip stitch join to the first single crochet. There's my last stitch of the round, which is a single crochet that completes the three single crochets there. Insert my hook right into the very first single crochet and complete a slip stitch. I'm going to work a couple more rounds to finish this off. When I worked my original clutch, I wanted to finish off in half double crochet the same way as I had started it in half double crochet. I worked it first the last two rounds here in brown. I'll put up a photo here so you can see what it looked like. Then I took the brown out and I reworked it in the white because I really wasn't sure which one I wanted to be more. I'll put up another photo here so you can see it. I did a poll on Facebook asking opinions with both photos and I got pretty close to half liked brown, half liked white. So what I am going to do here to finish off is work in single crochet rounds instead and I'm going to alternate the colors that I used in the bag here. 
I'm thinking three rounds of single crochet here in place of these two rounds of half double crochet. I haven't quite decided yet what I'm going to do, but I'm going to go ahead and get you started with the round. And then after I finish deciding the way that my colors are going to be, I'll come back and I'll let you know. But overall, it's going to be three rounds of single crochet to finish off. Chain one, single crochet into the very first stitch, and single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And that's how all these rounds are going to be worked when you get to the end, slip stitch join. And that slip stitch completes my round. Now bear with me as I figure my other colors out, but go ahead and finish off two more rounds of single crochet in your desired colors. All right, what I ended up doing with this bag, I just went back to my original plan and I finished it out in the brown. I think ultimately what might be throwing me off here is the fact that this is so large and this at the top is so small. And it just looks a little bit disproportional to me. But that was the plan was to have a sort of a leather look down here at the bottom. So it worked out. I did three rounds of brown up here in single crochet. And my bag is measuring about nine and three quarter inches tall. I'm going to go ahead and fasten off my two colors. Pull up the loop on the brown to break it. Insert from the wrong side to the right side. Yarn over and pull that strand through so it's on the wrong side. I am using these pre-made canvas bags as you can see here on the back. It looks like my crocheted fabric is not tall enough to cover the canvas bag, but the crocheted fabric is going to stretch. If you're using a similar lining, all you have to do is stick your hand down in the bag and push the fabric up and it'll stretch to fit and then tack it in place. I'm going to take this out now though because I just wanted to make sure that it would fit. Flip this around to the wrong side so I can weave in all my ends. Go ahead and grab your tapestry needle and I'll meet you back here. All right, I've threaded my tapestry needle here on the bottom of the bag where I started. Put my hand in the bag so it will make it easier for me to reach. And I did crochet over a few stitches here so that will count as my first pass. So I'll work two more passes. That's my magic number three here. When I enter and exit a stitch with my needle, I do not pick up the whole stitch like this. Instead, I break the stitch in half so that it will catch my yarn better. 
Then I'll weave back through a couple stitches here and break the yarn in half at the exit as well. I do this every single time I enter and exit. Use my fingers to manipulate the fabric. And then I'll work a return pass here, break my stitch in half, work through the same stitches, break the stitch in half. If you are comfortable with your weave after three, you can fasten off. If you need a fourth one, go ahead and work a fourth one. Whatever you feel most comfortable that your yarn is secure, use your fingers to manipulate the fabric so it doesn't bunch up, and then fasten off. And I will do that for every end that I'm weaving in. Three passes. Breaking the stitch when I enter and exit. And here, I did work horizontally down here. Horizontal stitches here could pucker your fabric, make it look bunched up, restrict the stretch for the width. So... If you can, I recommend vertical stitches. So for the rest of my ends here, I'm going to be working vertically, same three passes. Working vertically for the double crochet rows is a little bit different because the stitches are more spread out and taller. So I was just going to show you how I did those. I'm still going to go for vertical. So I'm going to have to build a little bulkiness to work into. Right now my yarn is down here at the bottom. I'm going to work it up to the top. So I'm just going to go into that middle back bump and sort of wrap the yarn around it. I don't want to pull too tight because I don't want it to distort my fabric. It definitely will. Then I'm going to go from the top here and I'm going to go underneath that yarn loop. And then I'm going to work downward here in the next stitch. But I want to work just through this top layer that's here on the back. I don't want my needle to work through the stitches on the front side. And now I have created a bulkiness here that I can work back through. So I'll go into a nearby stitch here. And then work back upward through several stitches. And then enter a nearby stitch. In this case, it's white, but as long as it's on this back side, nobody is going to see it from the front. And then work back through those same stitches. And then I'm just using my fingers to manipulate the fabric here. I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and fasten off. So this is how I'm going to weave in my ends here in the ripple pattern. 
Up here where I fastened off, I'll just weave it vertically through those stitches, very similar to how I did in the brown down here. The stitches are much tighter and easier to weave into. Let's talk about the lining real quick. I use canvas bags that I get from Hobby Lobby. It is already sewn and put together with a zipper that is ready to go. It saves a lot of time so that I don't have to make them. If I'm using the bag for myself, I will not sew it in. I just put my crocheted fabric over it. The crocheted fabric stretches to fit and I feel that it is snug. It's not going to go anywhere and that is how I use it. It makes it a lot easier so that I can change out the crocheted bags and use whichever one I want simply by just pulling it off the liner and then I don't have to have too many bags finished. That is because I personally do not enjoy the sewing process and I will avoid it if it's for me. If I'm gifting this item or selling this item, I will sew it in. I do not use hot glue though I know a lot of makers that do. I want this bag to be durable, machine washable, and sometimes hot glue can gum up in a machine. Sometimes it works really great. Sometimes it gums up. It really just depends, I guess, on the heat setting. So if you were to hot glue this in, I might recommend hand washing in cold water. But my preferred way is using silamide thread. It is a waxy coated thread that is stronger than regular sewing thread. So you don't need as thick of a strand whenever you're sewing. I use this and I hand stitch it right there along the top to the canvas bag. You could also do it on a machine. The zipper sometimes makes it a little bit difficult to work around that corner right there. But it also works great and that saves you time from hand sewing as well. Ultimately the decision is up to you, but if you're gifting or selling I highly recommend you go the extra step for this. Guys, thanks so much for watching my video. You'll find the free crochet pattern for this linked down below in the description. Please smash that like button and hit subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.